Prime News. Good evening, I'm Vinny Politan. Welcome to Prime News. Just released disturbing new video shows Houston police officers apparently beating a 15-year-old burglary suspect. Now, we're going to show you the whole thing, but first let me introduce my guests so we can all watch this together. Joining me tonight, attorney for one of the officers indicted in this incident, Dick DeGuerin, HLN law enforcement analyst Mike Brooks, and Quinnell X, a national spokesman for the new Black Panthers. He's a spokesperson for the victim's family and the person who released this video. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the video. Let's let it roll as, as we watch what's happening for folks who haven't seen it. There you see the suspect going down as he's hit by the car, Mike Brooks, and police respond. They're on him very quickly. Uh, but now I see a lot of kicking, a lot of jostling. I mean, is this old? It seems to me, I'm just a lay person, it seems like to right. me that's a little too much. I see this golf officer with his left foot continue to kick. Vinny, 26 years on the streets, and then I was at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center teaching arrest techniques after that. And this is not any arrest technique I have ever taught or have ever used. Well, now, here's the thing. He, he's lying down face down. Right. I mean, do he's, you approach a, a suspect differently when they're face down? He's prone down. You can see his hands. That's what you look for, the hands. If he's not a threat, then get him cuffed up and then search him. But there's no need for what went on and what we saw in this particular video. You're supposed to use enough force to maintain your arrest. There was a lot more force than they needed to maintain that arrest. Uh, Dick DeGaron, you uh, represent one of the officers. Now there's a, a series of officers out here, so I don't know who's doing what. Uh, but from your perspective, is this a case where um, these officers, the adrenaline's just flowing and, and, and they went a little bit overboard? Well, you know, it, it, it's an ugly tape. There's no question about that. But if you uh, parse it and look at what each of the officers did, they're going to have to justify their own. But what Andrew Blumberg, who I represent, did, he was the first guy up to the uh, to this teenage crook. He tried to get his hands back where they could be. Now, uh, is, 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 is your client, because we're watching it right now, Dick, no. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm trying to clarify. Is your client the one grabbing the left arm or the right arm? Do you know? Uh, it's left arm. He, he, he tried to uh, get his left arm behind his back, and then Andrew Blumberg ran off and uh, assisted another officer uh, in making another arrest. He's the one that uh, you see without a um, a vest on, and he runs off real quick. Now that you know uh, what happens after that, he didn't see it, didn't participate in it. And my concern is that they'll all be blamed together. for the actions mm -hmm. of of the ones that came later. Okay. Uh, Cornell Lex, I've got to ask you, as we watch this, and, and this, this, obviously, you know, they're in pursuit of him because he was doing something wrong. He's, he's been convicted of burglary. There was uh, some undercovers watching him. He's fleeing from police. We understand that. Uh, but it seems from where I'm sitting that this, uh, this suspect, defendant, criminal, whatever you want to call him, I call him a young man who got assaulted, if you'd like, because we're watching his videotape. Uh, he's on the ground in a prone position, and it doesn't look like he is mounting any threat What's been the reaction in the community now that this has been released and people have seen what has happened here? The community is angry. Many in the community are outraged. If you see the tape, the young man is clipped by the HPD cruiser. He falls down to the ground immediately. He puts his hands out straight, then he puts them behind his head, totally surrendering to them. He never resists. In fact, when he was kicked in the face, you would see his body goes limp because, as he said to me, he was knocked unconscious. He was not resisting. He was not posing a threat. He was not dangerous to those officers. They were like a pack of wolves jumping on a piece of raw meat. And so even though Mr. DeGuerin's client may not have been the one that participated in the actual beating of Mr. Holly, all of them participated, in my opinion, in the cover-up, and none of them attempted to go to authorities and up a chain of command and report what the other ones had did. So if you were there and you saw all of those young men, not just Mr. Holly being abused, but the other ones were abused also, why did not they go back and report what they did see and what did take place? If you didn't report it, you're just as guilty, in my opinion. Those officers were wrong, and many of them that you see doing the kicking repeatedly, punching to the side, kicking in the groin, and one particular cop, you see him hitting and kicking, then walks to his cruiser, puts something in his cruiser, comes back to a plainclothes officer, has a dialogue with him, then goes right back and gets him another kick. These are criminals in uniform.
Let's, take, let's read a statement uh, from the officers, and, and this is how it reads. Uh, we would like to caution everyone against making too quick of a judgment in this case based solely on what is depicted in the videotape. There were many facts and circumstances known by the officers at the time of the incident that motivated their individual decisions and the urgency with which they acted. Those facts and circumstances will be brought out in each individual officer's trial, and each individual deserves the opportunity to explain and justify his own actions in a court of law. I go to you, Mike Brooks. Uh, you know, we don't know what happens before the tape, and that's what happens in all these cases. Right. Um, but do we even need to know what happened beforehand based upon what we see in this tape, Mike Brooks, uh, from your experience? If they can, if they can explain somehow that this, uh, th this man was a threat to them, uh, a threat to their bodily harm, uh, and there was a need for the techniques that were used there, uh, then they're going to have to explain that in court. Uh, you know, how they're going to explain that, that remains to be seen. If I'm they listening can. to you, Mike, but I'm listening between the lines of your voice, and, and, and you're, you sound pretty skeptical. Let's go to the phone lines tonight. Kay is in Texas. Kay, uh, have you seen the videotape, and what do you think? Oh, yes, I have seen the videotape, and I am not surprised as to what happened there. My husband works for the city of Houston. He's not a police officer, but he works for the city of Houston, and he's in a position where he sees stuff like this happen quite a bit and he says they act like a bunch of pit bulls going after an innocent prey and it's it upsets me because this is not who we are down here and but these individuals that did this this young man is is, is ridiculous and they should be not only tried for what they've done because that is assault on this gentleman, they didn't try to fight these, he didn't try to fight these officers. He laid there and was doing what he was supposed to do at that time. It's not up to them to do the punishment for this guy. That's, that's the, that's the, the uh, you're right there, Kay. I mean, the, the punishment is supposed to come in the court of law. Mike, we got to do this, Mike. I'm going to let you respond. I'm going right. to let Dick DeGuerin respond. We're going to hear more from Cornell uh, as we take a look at this and, and figure out what it means. I mean, do we take a look at this tape and say, oh my goodness, what aren't we seeing on tape? Or is this the exception? That's coming up plus this on Prime News. I was scared at first. Like, I thought they was just going to handcuff me and then just put me in the car. But after that, they just started uh, kicking me in. A video of what many are calling a police beating, a police beatdown, uh, is now causing a lot of controversy in Houston, Texas, and across the nation now that this video has been released. The question here I have right now, I want to throw to all my guests, is what we're seeing right here on this video, because they didn't know they were being videotaped. This wasn't from the police cruiser. This was from a surveillance camera from a local business that was there. Is this the exception or the rule? Uh, Dick DeGarren, I want to go to you first. You're representing one of these officers. I'm sure you've represented uh, police in the past as well. Um, do you think this is the exception or the rule for what's taking place? Well, I can't speak for the other officers. I can only speak for Blumberg. And uh, what Mike said a minute ago is you you got to watch the suspect's hands. And these officers had information that these burglars might be armed. And what Blumberg did was he made sure that the uh, crook's left hand was secure. And then he ran and helped another officer and didn't see what happened after that. So as far as what uh, Blumberg did, I think it was reasonable and it was necessary given that they didn't know whether this uh, crook was armed or not, and he, all he did was try to get his hand where it could be handcuffed. All right, uh, Cornell X, is it, do you think that this is the exception or this is the rule for what takes place when it's not being videotaped? You know, I respect Mr. DeGuerin because he's one of the best attorneys in this city, but he knows. He has a lot of clients that he knows has been beaten and abused by these same particular police department, the Houston Police Department. This is not an exception. This is the rule. It just was caught on tape this time, and now the world can see what's going on. They've been behaving like this in this city for decades, but now because of a tape at a storage facility, and they did not know they were on camera, now the world gets to see their behavior brought into the light. So I disagree. This is not an exception in the hood with brothers and in particular black and hispanic men this is absolutely the norm among us mike brooks uh, from your experience is, is this the rule or the exception to the rule what we're seeing here Vinny, when something like this happens it gives police officers across the country a black eye but i can tell you there are thousands of men and women that put their life on the line every single day here in the united states in fact there's 18 line of duty deaths so far this year 11 by gunfire this is the exception. This is not the rule across the United States. Lance is in Massachusetts tonight. Lance, uh, taking a look at the videotape. Your thoughts tonight? 
Uh, yes, sir. What I was wondering is I see these uh, police officers beating this young man, and, I, you know, it's, it, I heard people say earlier that he had done some really wrong things that the police had known about. And what I was wondering, do their actions constitute hate? Because, I mean, I've never seen anyone beat like that. I mean, I've seen people beaten like that and by police officers in my life. So this is this is not the exception. There's just no way. I mean, I've seen this several times Lance, in my life. Lance, thanks so yes, much sir. for the call. Not charged with a hate crime here. From my perspective, I see police in a hot pursuit, and they're too emotional, too much adrenaline, and they're taking it out on the suspect. And uh, obviously everyone's got their point of view here. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, Cornell X. Dick DeGurn and my friend Mike Brooks. Straight ahead here on Prime News.